Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1979 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Up front is a 5.0 liter V8, down below is a 3 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Cutlass Supreme for two reasons. First of all, I love this era of cars, I've been digging more into like the 70s and Malise era cars and this definitely fits that bill, but the second reason is that this car has an interesting story story as you might be able to assume by the way it looks and I'm excited to share that story with you today. But if you would like to share your vehicle and your vehicle story with me, you can head on over to my website zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 307 under the hood. It's lopy, it's lazy, and it's not very directed. This is a late 70s V8, which might as well be called a neutered V8. Because of the oil crisis and emissions and everything like that, engines in the late 70s and early 80s pretty much sucked. They were not very good. And so the 307, it's fine, it's a V8, but I think you get more of a punch out of a sour Laffy Taffy than you would this. Now, like I said, paired to it is a three-speed automatic and it is trying its darndest here today. It's fine. Last but not least, of course, the Cutlass Supreme is rear wheel drive. So how does it feel to drive a Cutlass Supreme? Well, the suspension is relatively floaty. It is a little bouncy and definitely has that old style feel. Although we were entering the 80s, this still is that older generation. This is still grasping onto the 70s tooth and nail. The steering wheel has been swapped out, but the power steering is buttery smooth like an otter in an oil slick it is so smooth and so comfortable i can't help but lean when i drive this thing behind the wheel it's almost like that moment where you're sort of halfway sleeping and you wake up in the middle of the night and you go to get a snack and you don't remember coming down the stairs. It feels like you just kind of glided down the stairs and you're not fully functioning. That's kind of how this feels. It's sort of in a dreamland. It's like walking on a cloud or piloting a cloud. So I really, really enjoy that. And my final thoughts will play into it, but this car sat for a very long time. So the fact that it was able to retain those traits is very interesting. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have very uh, rectangular gauges. My speedometer is rectangular. My odometer is rectangular. My fuel gauge is rectangular. All my warning lights are rectangular. And of course, which gear I'm in is a rectangle. The steering wheel, as I mentioned, has been changed out. This is a Grant steering wheel, and I actually do really enjoy it, but it's not factory. And off to the left, I do have my wipers high and low, my lights, and a climate vent. I also have a little cruise control button down lower on the dashboard. Moving on to the door, we have crank windows and our mirror adjustments, as well as it says Cutlass Supreme. Kind of interesting, this is the original door card. However, this plastic down at the bottom has aged very poorly, but what do you expect? Moving into the center, we get an Oldsmobile badge surrounded by two more climate vents, and then our climate controls. Very, very simple here. I do get a cigarette lighter off to the right, a aftermarket radio that someone somewhere down the road put in, and then some added gauges as well. There is no center console down by my right knee, so there are no cup holders here in the 79 Cutlass Supreme, so unfortunately, it fails the big friggin' bottle test, but very predictably. <laughs> Now we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are a bench seat up front and they are incredibly comfortable. I always equate these cars to like lazy boy recliners, but maybe a better term would be Tempur-Pedic. I mean, they are just so comfortable. They're what I would want on a long journey. I love feeling and driving cars like this. It takes the stress right out of your day. It sucks it up like a shop vac, just takes that stress away. I love that, and that's why people love these, because they were comfortable, because they were floaty and enjoyable, and that's what I love to see. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, although this is a coupe, so let's go do a back seat review. We're in the back of the 79 Cutlass Supreme, and first of all, the seats are very up and down, which isn't very common for GMs of this era. Normally, they were kind of reclined and very chill. These are not very chill. Although they are comfortable, the actual material is very bouncy and comfortable. I do have ashtrays in the back of the front seats, which is hilarious and a sign of the times, but overall, 
of the G bodies I've been in and of the GMs of this era I've been in, even the coupes, this is far from the best back seat that I've been in. But it's not bad. If I were to sit back here for a while, I wouldn't mind it too bad, but it's just very up and down. Maybe the seats have collapsed over the years, but I don't know, not fantastic. Let's hop out, we'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the 79 Cutlass. Now this is of the era where you had two different keys. So the square key was for the ignition, the round key was for the body. Pop it up like that, and as you can see, because it is an American car from the 70s, you have tons and tons of trunk space. Here is an Oldsmobile center cap, which I really love. And there it is, pretty self-explanatory, nothing really to write home about, but I just love how much trunk space you got in the back of the Cutlass Supreme from 79. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is 50 shades of red and white, but I really, really love the look of the 79 Cutlass Supreme. I think it has an interesting look, and interesting is hard to achieve, or was hard to achieve back in the 70s, because they all kind of look the same. They were cut out of blocks, and I guess car designers were allergic to an edge, but they weren't here in the Cutlass Supreme because this car's front grille actually curves up onto the hood. I've always found this to be very, very interesting and something that isn't really mimicked anymore. It probably cost them so much extra money instead of just putting one flat grill on the front to have two curved grills. It takes extra fasteners. It takes extra design to make sure they don't fall out. So the thought and research that went into this is quite extreme for just a little style cue. But hey, that's what GM was doing back in the late 70s. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the 79 Cutlass Supreme? Well, first of all, I really enjoy it. It's comfortable, it's cozy, and it's relaxing. Cut to the in car. I've been driving this car, maybe it's because this seat belt is trying to cut my head off, but I've been driving with one elbow on the center console, one hand on the wheel, I feel like I need like a Diet Coke in my hand or something if I went back to drinking soda and just kind of cruise, just, hey, how's it going? Oh, you know, it, whenever dr people drive by, I just instinctively go, yeah, put head down, two fingers up. How's, how's it going? How you, how you doing? I just, this this is what feels comfortable and natural, and, and I love that about this vehicle. But this car does have an interesting story. So the owner, Rob, and his son, William, William set up this review, thank you to both of them. They saw this car on the side of the road for years. It was actually parked outside of a bicycle shop, a town over from them. And it sat and sat and sat, and the guy wanted too much money, too much money. We all know that story. But something changed where it went onto the OfferUp website with a pretty dramatic price drop. And so Rob and William picked it up. And this car has been neglected to say the least. Some kid put a stereo in here and obviously had a subwoofer due to some wires found under the hood. It was also originally a white car that's been painted several different times. The headliner's missing. The dash is cracked and destroyed. This is not a showroom car. I don't think I had to tell you that, but let's be honest. Let's let's get it out there in the ether. This is not a showroom quality car. But what it is, is a metaphor for the American way. Couple of things. First of all, us Americans really prioritize our comfort. Comfort is our number one priority, or at least in this era it was. But at the same time, this car has been dealt a bad hand. And I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying it's been dealt several bad hands in the decades since its release. The way it sits right now, it's far from happy. But this car keeps going. It sat on the side of the road for years, and yet all it needed was a little bit of fresh gas and a battery, and here it is today. It's needed very minimal work to be in the driving condition you're seeing in this video. This car should have quit a long time ago. This should have been recycled into Coke cans or a public bench three presidential terms ago. And yet it's not, it's still here doing its original purpose, making me comfortable. It hasn't given up, it hasn't cashed out, even when it should have. This car for all intents and purposes shouldn't be running, shouldn't be on the road, and shouldn't still exist. And yet, it's the American way. We push forward. We are, as a country, a very, very sleepy and lazy bear. But the last thing you want to do in the world is to poke 
the bear. Because when you poke the bear and we get out of our recliners and we wipe the Cheeto dust off our fingers, it's over. That's what this car is. It's American ingenuity, relaxing for the moment. And for your benefit, let's hope it stays that way. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Rob as well as William for letting me take out their Cutlass Supreme. They have been absolutely awesome. Huge asset to the channel. I filmed a bunch of their cars in the past and I'm sure I'll film a bunch of their cars in the future as well. But a huge thank you to them. This wouldn't be possible without them, and they are just awesome. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.